So your SCADA system has all these remote telemetry units and, and outside field devices that it's uh, collecting all the data uh, from your electric grid um, or from any system out there. And uh, it's bringing it all back into a, a central control room or back into some sort of centralized system that people can access to see what's going on. So uh, once you've collected all that data and it's sitting there inside the SCADA system, uh, the next step is to make that data available to for human consumption. So uh, the, an important part of a SCADA system is a human machine interface or HMI and uh, right here on the screen I've got a, a sample HMI screen and uh, so this is actually kind of a cool little screen because you can see we've got gas turbines and remember I talked about gas turbines or, or combustion turbines and uh, we've got breakers and feeders and so the power is generated down here and then this is how it goes out into the out into the uh, electric grid um, to be uh, consumed by the users so uh, in this particular one you can see that these over here aren't really doing anything and these are all connected you can see the green boxes and it's going down so the power is flowing down Um, the elements of, a, of an HMI display, um, from what we saw in there, you can put numeric values, so things like your voltages and currents and all that stuff. Uh, status symbols, uh, whether a switch is open or closed, or a breaker is open and closed, or a generator is operating, or things like that. Uh, trends and gauges on the screens, and then... Uh, Another element of the HMI system overall is alarm management. So uh, let's go back to the previous screen a little bit. Let me just point some of this stuff out. So uh, let's see, numeric displays. We can see numeric displays right here. So we can see values that are being read and displayed on the screen. Uh, the status symbols are all these symbols on here. Um, and it's real common for these to be animated in some way. Um, you can see breakers open and close, um, or you can see the colors change to indicate whether they're open or closed. Uh, so those are your status symbols. Um, we don't have any trends or gauges on this particular screen, but I do have an HMI trend here. So uh, this is I'm kind of excited here because I can I can tie in some of the other stuff we've been talking about. Um, so this is just trends for. A value over time okay it's not the most exciting trend but you can see it's you know bouncing around a little bit there uh, but let's look and see what we have here so we've got the the current time right the, usually the trends show you the time over here and then this shows you 15 minutes back so this is this comprises a 15 minute trend and uh, we can see uh, the scale of the trend right so this trend shows the bottom of the trend would be 2000 and the top would be 2900 and then here's here's where the tags come in so you can see the different colors of the tags here and these are tags in the system and so you can see right here that this is a uh, uh, a temperature in degrees Fahrenheit it's got the tag name the descriptor the current value the engineering units and the upper and lower here are I imagine for the for the trend here and not the zero in the span for the tag but uh, this kind of shows you what we talked about in the telemetry unit um, about the importance of the metadata that comes along with the tags so that when you're looking at a when you're looking at a display you know what tag you're looking at you get a description of the tag you can see the value and you get the engineering units so uh, all that stuff becomes important hopefully that's becoming a little more apparent to you right there Um, here's an alarm screen so alarming uh, becomes pretty important because you've got you've got all these displays you saw the picture of the control room it's pretty busy there's there's uh, all kinds of things on the screen and you know all kinds of things to look at but uh, you know you, you want to know the emergency things that are happening or the things that are happening that aren't normal you want those brought to your attention and so typically an, an HMI has has an alarming function and uh, the way this would work is uh, you would start out with a tag so let's say I had a tag for a voltage okay 
So um, let's say my normal reading is 120 volts, and uh, but I need to know whenever this goes out of say, you know, between it goes below 118 volts or say above 122 volts, uh, that's a minor incident, you know, and I, I want to know about it. And let's say if it goes below 115 volts and more than 125 volts, well, that's a, that's a big deal. So typically, what'll happen is I will set up an I'll set up an alarm system and I'll tell it for each tag in there. I'll set limits for it, and I'll say and a severity for the alarm. And then what the system does is every time a new update comes in for this particular tag, it checks the value, checks to see if it's outside of this range of, of possible values. And if it is, then it sets an alarm and it puts an alarm on the screen. So now as an operator, I can go and I can look at all my alarms or I can look at my alarm screen and I can see all the different tags that are out of some sort of specification and I get a severity and um, another important thing as far as uh, managing this kind of stuff is knowing whether somebody's looked at the tag or not so maybe I've got a large control room or maybe I have a couple of different control rooms and so a new alarm comes in and you can see here like it says unac and ack okay so those are acknowledged alarms and unacknowledged alarms so when the alarm comes in it'll go into alarm okay and then either somebody it'll somebody will acknowledge it somebody'll say okay i've i've seen that i've i'm doing something about it so they'll acknowledge the alarm um and then eventually the problem will be fixed or the the reading will go back into the bounds and and then the it'll be out of alarm but you'll have this record now this will be saved in a database and you'll have this record that this alarm occurred at a certain time um here were the alarm limits and here's the value that it was and it went into alarm at this time and it went out of alarm at that time and it was acknowledged by this operator or you might see if somebody never acknowledged it it might blip into uh, into an alarm state and then a couple minutes later all by itself fix itself and so you'll just see it'll go in alarm and it'll go out of alarm but maybe nobody ever acknowledged it but this becomes important later on if you're troubleshooting or you're trying to figure out what happened or you're trying to figure out if an operator uh, responded properly to an event you go back and you look at your alarm log and you can see um, you know what happened maybe it came in and nobody saw it nobody dealt with it and then it went out of alarm by itself um, but this becomes an important record and it becomes an important aspect of the uh, of the computer system of the SCADA system overall so alarming is very important Alright, so back to my SCADA drawing, I'm going to allude to some of the things that we're going to talk about later on um, and make sure that you understand some of these concepts. So uh, in the field you've got all your instruments, okay, so you, you've got your, I uh, need to select the pin there, okay, so you've got your instruments these are connected into these embedded control devices out in the field okay and the instruments can be wired through a current loop right our 4 to 20 milliamp into an input card um, or there might be a communication card maybe these are smart instruments and I have an instrument out there that uh, you know monitors multiple different things and I'm talking to it through some sort of a digital inter or a, a yeah digital interface digital communication interface um, and uh, in addition to instruments that are taking floating point readings, I might also have uh, contact closures, switches, breakers, things like that that I'm monitoring. So all that stuff comes into the PLC or the PLC that's in a remote terminal unit. And it gets communicated back to the computers in the control room. And these computers in the control room are basically cataloging all the tags, right? They're keeping the tags. They want, they're keeping track of the uh, current value and hopefully they're also keeping track of some sort of a history right and we can see right here historian man we're gonna we're gonna be talking about that a lot in the next few lessons so you're gonna learn all about historians um, you have the workstations right this this compromise or this comprises the HMI system which gives you the screen status screens and trends it's also doing alarming okay 
and uh, like I said down here in the instruments there may be a smart instrument so let's say we have a smart meter okay at somebody's house and it might be measuring the volts might be measuring the current the power consumption and it might even be taking some sort of a temperature reading because maybe I want to know how hot it is out there where my customers are because that helps me predict how much electricity they're going to use so this smart meter right here is going to have multiple tags inside of it right so I might I'll have a tag for volts I'll have a tag for current I'll have a tag for power and so on and so forth and that would be communicated back into an RTU through the communication interface and come back up. Now the other thing that happens is as you can see we've got the corporate LAN here so later on we're going to be talking about system integration so this SCADA system is only for the control purposes the things that I need to do to control the um, electric grid now there may be other data that I'm bringing in and I might be bringing them in I might have SCADA RTUs and things like that but they're a separate system so a lot of times what will happen uh, because of cybersecurity concerns and things like that the the electric SCADA system the one that actually controls the grid only has the instrumentation that I need to to control the grid but the other information that I want to collect because it's useful to me and I need it to analyze, I might have a secondary SCADA system that doesn't have the capability of making anything happen in the field. I can't open and close breakers. I can't cause anything to happen, but I can read a bunch of stuff. So there might actually be a couple of different SCADA systems, a primary one that does the control, that can make breakers open and close and do things like that. And then there might be a measurement only one, a separate one, that uh, that they set up for security reasons that can only read data from the field and a lot of times up here you've got a view node or somebody in the corporate LAN they need to be able to look at all that information like it's all coming from one system and so we'll talk a little bit about the system integration and then um, but before that we're actually going to talk about communications protocols and networking um, so we'll talk about how like these smart instruments can communicate tag data to an RTU or a PLC and then also how these RTUs and PLCs communicate d tag data back into the main SCADA system here, the main control system. So the communications and the protocols that are used to talk we'll, we'll discuss and then after that we're going to talk about this part, the system integration where you have different systems inside of a corporation that need to get data from multiple SCADA systems and do something with them.